are the four common errors that happen when trying to do the forehand front court offense footwork. So in my experience as a coach and also as a player, there are four things that come up again and again as people are trying to master this front court forehand side footwork. Now, it can be a little misleading in our sport because the more you watch the top and the professional players, the easier badminton appears to be. But actually, like a lot of sports, it's the opposite. The better the player is, the easier things look. So that means when you're learning things, it can feel and look really challenging. But stick with it, have patience, because the more natural it becomes, the better and smoother it's going to look. I know that's the same for me when I go and try other sports. I watch the pros on TV and I think, oh, I can do that. That looks easy enough, right? Wrong. So everything needs work, so be patient. So the first common error that I want to cover is what I call the weak prep jump. So we talked about making sure we squash those tarantulas before we move forward. But some people have a problem with that. They're a little too gentle. And so they do a nice, delicate, and very ballet-like prep jump. But this is badminton. It's not ballet. You need a strong, solid push to activate your muscles and use the floor so you can push off of it and get enough distance to handle the shots that are all the way up at the net. So if I don't do a strong prep jump, it can look something like this. And it's kind of like a car running out of gas. Like I putt, putt my way, like putt, putt, ooh. And then I don't have enough steam or energy to get me all the way out to the corner. So the solution for that is to get a strong push from your feet. Make sure you squash those tarantulas. They're going to bite you if you don't. So a strong push, and then look at all the energy I'm carrying with me forward. So to practice that, Make sure you get a strong push and reach. And feel that energy as if you're carrying a big freight train behind you. So you have to pull and get all the way to the corner. Okay? The second common problem that occurs is misstepping. So actually using the incorrect footwork to get to the corner. It's instinct for a lot of players that when the bird comes over to my right side or my left side, that I should automatically move the leg that is closest to the shuttle in order to get there. But that's not true, as we know, because when I'm moving to my forehand side, the first step I want to take after my prep is actually the left or the non-racket leg and then I push off of that. So this is what the wrong steps can sometimes look like. Ooh, oops. And then the timing goes and the balance goes. Or if you're really good at trying to hide that you did the wrong step, then you'll lunge with the wrong leg forward and hope nobody noticed. But that's not the most efficient way. So to correct that misstep, two things need to happen. One you need to make sure that your legs are bent on the prep jump. Because if your legs are bent, then it's harder to lift that front leg. And you'll be more inclined to lift the correct leg, which is the non-racket leg. So that's one hint, helpful hint, to stay low. The second is to really reinforce the wording of the steps. So take it back to one of our first sessions in this module where we're talking about going slowly and refresh those steps and say the words. So if you're right-handed, say the words out loud. Prep left, right. Prep left, right. I often find that by saying the words out loud, my legs respond better than by saying it through the internal communication. They actually understand what I'm saying. And then it can reinforce that pattern. Prep, left, right. Because if you go to initiate prep, left, and then you'll catch yourself. Oh, wrong leg. So that's solving for
for the second common error of missteps. Now the third one, which is so common on the forehand side, is what I call the flying fish footwork. And I call it that because you end up looking like a fish flying through the air out of water and diving back into the water. To see that again? Notice how my body is going up and down again. Well, or your body, if this is the problem you're having. And the thing with that is, if you have all that energy going down, your recovery is gonna be really slow. So there are lots of problems with the flying fish. To solve the flying fish dilemma, you want to focus a lot on your upper body because the flying fish can only happen if your upper body falls over top of your front leg. Remember when I was talking about dangling off a cliff? That can only happen if all my energy falls forward. So to solve this, I need to really think about keeping my gravity between the legs and not letting it flop over top of my front leg. So think about your gravity like a ball, like a heavy medicine ball that you might see in your fitness center. You're holding that gravity here around your stomach and you're moving out towards the forehand and then instead of letting that gravity ball fall over your front toe, try and just let it sink down between your legs to keep your balance on top of your body rather than in front of. So if you think about that gravity here, it'll help you then to be able to reverse back in your recovery. And don't forget about your left or non-racket arm. So I'm reaching out and I'm keeping that arm back, the gravity centered, and then I can push back again. Okay? Reach and back. This is also a common problem on the left side. So I better show the lefty flying fish as well. And collapse. I don't wanna practice it too much the wrong way, but you know who you are. So to correct that on that side, we need to, again, keep that gravity centered, non-racket arm back, and recover. And now, the final challenge that's a common error is a sloppy racket. Now we talk about footwork, and again, I've said before, people think that it's just about the feet, but it's not. It's the upper body as well as the racket positioning. Because if you're gonna practice it, practice it in the correct way. So for a sloppy racket, the solution for that is to, for a second, don't prioritize your feet and focus a lot on where the racket is actually moving. Even though I'm doing the steps without the bird, I have to imagine where I might connect with the bird and imagine what shot I'm hitting and keep my racket steady and stable both when I hit and on my recovery, okay? So this is what a sloppy racket might look like. I might not start in the right position. I might start down here. And a clue is also, I often hear people hitting the ground with their racket. So that's a dead giveaway that your racket is slopping all over the place. If you're actually hitting the racket on the floor from an offensive position. Okay, so look for those indicators to help you uncover what your problem is. So to solve the sloppy racket, I have to be very aware and mechanical with my racket. I'm watching it and I'm keeping it steady. I'm watching my racket the whole time. If I'm a lefty with a sloppy racket issue, I'm watching the racket out. And by watching it, I make sure that it stays up and alert. Because I'll catch it. If it goes down here, I'll, I'll realize, oh, it's down there. And my whole body will tilt, so I have to keep that upper body upright. So those are the four common problems and solutions to help you through those problems. Now, in my own career, I realized that 
in order to be a great player, you have to be very aware of what you're doing on the court. And something that helped me so much was videoing myself to play. It's painful at first, you know, oh, you don't want to see yourself. And, but you have to be very objective about it. Study yourself so that you can improve your game. That's the best way to help you go forward. Today, almost every phone has a camera. So it's, you know, their excuses are low in terms of you don't need a high tech uh, fancy camera. As long as you can film yourself, even for just five minutes at a time, watch it and learn from it and then go back and you can be your own coach. That's really, really helpful. Another thing you can do if you're going to the gym or your fitness center, almost all gyms and fitness centers have aerobic studios with a mirror in them. It's really valuable and I learned a lot from watching myself do the footwork. I could realize, oh, I didn't realize it doesn't feel like my racket's so low, but it is. And you can make those little adjustments to help yourself improve at the fastest rate. So that's your assignment for this week. I want everybody to go out and film yourself doing the forehand front court offense footwork in all the different combinations. You can, you can redo the assignments from past or you can create some new ones covering within those movements that we've learned so far. So until next time, step your game up.